Welcome to Ned Ned Nerb the Schizophrenic. This is day 19 of 100 symptoms. Today I'm going to talk about religious delusions. The first question some might ask, who is to say what exactly the difference is between a religious delusion and a religious experience? Indeed, the individuals make the same utterance. God is communicating with me directly. In some sense, the only difference is permission by the family and community. Indeed, in many U.S. states, religious fervor laws permit controllable individuals to remain in situations where their experiences have continuity with spiritual practices. In other words, religious communities accept the individual's experiences and provide an interpretive context. It seems clear to me, however, that there is a possibility of the church or religious family losing grip on the other symptoms. Cumulatively, or in time, the behavior changes and more categorically psychotic symptoms take precedence. In some sense, the controllable becomes wild and frightening. After that transit, it's less feasible to assume the experience is a religious one. That said, I am not the arbiter of spiritual reality. I also don't believe in absolutely blind materialism as a suitable interpretation of all experiential realities. That also said, when a person loses touch with shared relevant realities, there is no room to assess situations except for the risk of self-harm and unhealthy condition. The individual dealing with schizophrenia, schizoaffective or bipolar disorder, needs a lot of help coming back to reality. Religious delusions can be particularly tough due to materialism being so unsatisfying. It's easy to succumb to the power of spiritual sensations and perceptions. Ask any questions in the comments below if you seek clarification. Open for discussion. Please subscribe and share. This is Ned Ned Nerb, the Schizophrenic, Day 19 of 100 Symptoms. Thanks for watching.